Well, welcome. I have Maxine Bernier, leader of the People's Party of Canada, joining me today. Uh, it's been a beautiful Indian summer. The skies are blue. The, the sun is shining. But our uniparty leaders in Ottawa are casting some dark shadows uh, and beating the war drums in Ottawa. So I wanted to have a, a, a brief conversation with Maxime Bernier, of course, he's leader of the PPC Party of Canada, also a former Minister for Foreign Affairs uh, during the Harper government. So thank you very much for joining with me uh, today, Max. Thank you, Randy. I'm very pleased to be with you. So listen, uh, before we get into that, we're also, you and I are going to be sharing a stage again. Uh, we haven't uh, done that for a little while. We had a lovely time sharing stages during the 2021 general election. Um, but November 9th, uh, you and I will be uh, back at it again. Uh, maybe uh, 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 let let the audience know what's, what's happening November 9th. Yes, Randy, I'm very pleased. That will be fun. Saturday, November, November 9th in Burlington uh, Golf Club, Ontario, we're going to be together. It's a, a gala, a fundraiser for the People's Party of Canada, actually for the candidates in that region to be ready for the next general election. And we'll have a discussion about the, the state of the union in Canada, what is happening in our country, what uh, we can do together to fix that. So that would be a nice evening. And I'm looking forward We'll, we will uh, discuss and answer questions to the people over there. A nice evening, Saturday, November 9. Put that in your agenda. If you want to know, to know more, just, you know, go on the website. You have the poster here below, so you can you have all the details. Right on. So, um, listen, I'm looking forward to uh, being in Burlington. We were there in 2021 as well. Uh, this is a uh, big fundraiser event. Uh, and for people who want to see uh, you're traveling around doing a lot, uh, you can also, people can go on the PPC website and you've got a whole host of different events uh, up on there for people to come out and meet with you and um, learn about the platform of the PPC party, which is a very, very different than the Uniparty. Uh, and, and just for people to be aware, you know, in the last general election, Max, uh, um, nearly a million Canadians voted for Purple. They voted for the People's Party of Canada. Yep. They voted for freedom. Um, and I'm absolutely sure the next general election, we're going to see a significant number uh, more Canadians voting for freedom. So let's delve right into this subject about these uh, 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 these war clouds that the Uniparty is uh, promoting in Ottawa. And um, a couple of weeks ago, uh, Justin Trudeau uh, proclaimed to the world that, um, that Ukraine should be given the permissions to use Western missiles to attack deep within Russia and strike Russia territory. Now, the U.S., who has supplied the missiles, has said no. Uh, Russia has said unequivocally that any attack on um, on their country by use you know a country that supplies weapons uh, that are used to attack Russia will be seen as a state of war by that country that supplied the weapons. Uh, weapons and of course, Canada. Although we haven't supplied missiles, have supplied billions and billions of uh, weapons to um, uh, to the Ukraine. So, what what do you make of that? Uh, uh, of do you see Russia and Putin as a threat to Canada, and that we should start a new a war with a superpower? Yeah. No, actually, you know, they are not our enemies. And uh, the enemies of Canadians is the Canadian government. Look what they did to us, the citizens, during the COVID hysteria. 
lockdowns and stay at home orders and uh, you know they didn't respect our charter of rights uh, so but trudeau uh, uh, wants a, a, a war with uh, russia and we don't you know actually russia and putin when he said you know enough is enough uh, he said that to us and to the americans we can end that war as soon as possible and we just have to do what we did in the past as a country, promoting peace and prosperity and not promoting war. That's what we are doing right now. That's not the role of our country. It's very dangerous. Don't forget, Randy, Russia is our neighbors. And so, like the U.S., um, actually, uh, what is happening right now, it's very dangerous for the, the peace around the world. And that conflict must end. It's... Uh, proxy war between the U.S. and Russia. Uh, I don't know what will happen in the future, but our position at the People's Party for every war, it's, you know, we must not be part of that. Canada, like you said, gave uh, more than $14 billion to Ukraine. It's money that we don't have. <laughs> and now we have a recession in our country, inflation at, at the roof. People are not able to, you know, buy the goods that they want. Uh, you know, life is very difficult, and the Trudeau government is giving billions of dollars to Ukraine. That is not, you know, a, a, a democracy. Uh, well, that is one of the that is one of the consequences of this warmongering, Max. That I think a lot of Canadians don't see. If you just hear Trudeau saying, uh, you know, attack Russia, evil Putin, uh, uh, Russia is bad and evil. Uh, what we also don't see, though, is that those billions of dollars uh, going to Ukraine are not helping those uh, the fastest growing demographic in Canada, which is our homeless communities. Uh, people falling uh, out of the system, people not being able to afford or have uh, proper housing. Our food banks are skyrocketing in their use. Well, the leader of the nation says spend more and more of our money uh, and create even greater dangers uh, for our uh, peace and security of the of the world and, and Canadians. But, but you know, he's not the only one. We, you know, we have Justin Trudeau uh, banging the war drums uh, for Russia. But then uh, last week, we also had uh, Pierre Polyev, the, uh, uh, the leader of the Conservative Party of Canada, uh, stating that it would be a gift to humanity if Israel attacked and bombed uh, Iran and Iranian nuclear facilities, uh, uh, Iranian um, energy facilities, and of course, um, um, you know, it, it's it's pretty dangerous when you start blowing up nuclear facilities. What the Fallout from that uh, can be, but uh, uh, but again, uh, Iran, is, to the best of my knowledge, has never threatened Canada, uh, uh, and but here we are. Instead of using our uh, our strong reputation for uh, as peacekeepers, banging the drums for greater war. Uh, and as far as I'm concerned, Max, uh, but I'd like to hear your view, we don't have a dog in either one of these fights. Uh, neither Russia nor Iran or even these proxies like uh, Hezbollah, and uh, they, they don't threaten Canadians. They don't threaten our economy. They don't threaten our uh, freedoms. Uh, um, so we don't. And, and there's no strategic interest for Canada to be promoting war anywhere. You, you're absolutely right, Randy. And if you look at Polyev, Polyev is worse than Trudeau. Uh, Polyev said to Trudeau for the war in Ukraine that the federal government must give more money to Ukraine. And, you know, he was ready to <clears throat> engage a little bit more our country in that war in Ukraine. And actually what he's doing right now with uh, the conflict in Middle East, 
He is uh, pandering to the Jewish community like he was pandering to the Ukraine community in Canada for that war. When he's doing that, he's not working for Canadians. He's working against Canadian interests, against Canadian security. And so that's why we at the People's Party, we want to promote peace, yes, and prosperity. But why, you know, we have to be part of all these wars, uh, you know, across the world, <laughs> you know, the, the most important is to protect Canadians. And when we, when we are doing that, we are not protecting Canadians. And actually, Poliev and Trudeau on mass immigration are the same. You know, they are bringing more and more people here without any screening. And so what is happening in our country right now, the security of our country is not what it was 10 years ago because we are importing people that are importing these internal conflicts here in Canada, in our streets. So the way to fix that and to have a secure country is to have a moratorium on immigration, being sure that we select the right people. And so ending at the same time the Multiculturalism Act, because we are telling these people who are coming here, you can do what you want. You can bring your culture that is very different because every culture is not equal and promote your culture here in Canada instead of promoting Canadian identity. So Trudeau and Poliev are the same. They want the country to participate in every war, and that's not in line with the history of our country. Yeah. No, and I, and I think that that subject, we could get into uh, that subject on its own as well. But uh, but but I think there is something, uh, what, you, what we're, we're seeing happening, Max, is that um, the real dangers are happening here at home. Uh, the the real dangers to Canadians are not or in the Middle East. They're not in Ukraine, uh, and and they're not in Russia. Uh, the the real dangers, you know, and I'll say it to you, uh, Max. The only, there's only two governments in my lifetime that have ever threatened my freedom, my prosperity, and my ability to earn a living, and that is the. Uh, Justin Trudeau government in Ottawa and the Doug Ford conservative government in Toronto. Those are the only two governments that have censored me, that have tried to prevent, uh, and not, and of course, not just me. They have vilified and have used lawfare against a great many people. And uh, those two governments, the governments of Canada, pose a far greater threat to our freedom and our prosperity uh, than, than anybody external. But I think there's also, I think the other part of this that, um, you know, there's the unseen um, element of, of war, and that is the consequence. Uh, you know, we might watch the headlines and the bravado of Polyev and Trudeau uh, beating their chest uh, for more war. Uh, Canadians have been there before, and there's a uh, a tragic consequence that uh, that neither Polyev or or Trudeau are going to pay uh, when Canadians uh, uh, go into combat uh, in foreign wars, you know. and are dying over there. You're absolutely right. the The enemy of 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 us of Canadians is not like you just said Russia or another country. It is our own federal government that is not respecting our constitution, not respecting Canadians. And, you know, they they did what they did during COVID-19 against us. And you're still fighting against that. And I, I did fight also with uh, 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 at the Supreme Court of Canada against the vaccine passport. That was illegal, unconstitutional. Uh, I was in jail for 12 hours because I was uh, as a leader of a national party because I was fighting for freedoms for Canadians. So that's the federal government that is uh, the enemy of Canadians, not other countries. I agree. And, and you know, and I know, and I'm sure, you know, I know people that have fought for Canada who have uh, lost loved ones. And, um, you know, um, like we to be promoting war where Canadians uh, are uh, uh, face uh, these tragic consequences. Uh, you know there should be 
a very thoughtful, methodical uh, deliberations about, uh, and not just this uh, war mongering and beating of the chest. And and I and I think in large part, Max, I agree with you that all this talk about how uh, Hezbollah and Iran or Putin are the dangers to Canada obscures and disguises the true uh, dangers to Canadians. And that is the Uniparty, that is uh, the Liberal Party, the Conservative Party, um, all and even, even Jugmeet and, and the Orange Party are all together on promoting uh, uh, war and distracting Canadians from seeing uh, that they are the danger to us. Uh, absolutely. And it is, uh, you know, it is sad when you're seeing all that, what is happening, and all leaders that are supposed to work for Canadians, uh, political leaders, uh, are not doing that right now. Uh, if you look at their policies and their actions, uh, it's all about, you know, pandering to different uh, ethnic groups, uh, try to buy votes uh, with policies that will please uh, different uh, uh, groups. Uh, they're not working for, for Canadians, and, and we need a government that will work for us, with us, and, and defend the Canadian interests. Uh, actually, we know right now that in the Liberal Party of Canada and in the Conservative Party of Canada, there's members of parliament who are not loyal to our country, and Poliev and Trudeau didn't want to do anything. And actually, Poliev didn't want to know who are these uh, MPs in his own political party. And because, as you know, Randy, the RCMP said to Poliev, we can give you a brief. We can tell you who are the MPs in your party that are not loyal to the country. And Poliev said, no, I don't want to know anything about that. And same thing with Trudeau. <laughs> we have members of parliament that are not working in the best interest of our country. They're working for a foreign countries and they try to influence politics here in, Can here in Canada in line with their preoccupation in their country of origin. We cannot tolerate that, but Poliev and Trudeau are tolerating that. Well, listen, uh, Maxine, uh, if, uh, if we got rid of all of the members of parliament who were only serving their own interests or serving the interests of, of other countries, um, there wouldn't be very many people left in um, on Parliament Hill, in my view. Like you know, I we saw this. This has been going on for a long time, uh, and and again, we'll leave that for another show. But uh, we had uh, ministers in the Dalton McGuinty government and the Kathleen Wynne government uh, who were known to be serving their own interests and in those of another country. Uh, we also had members in the conservative caucus in Ontario, who I know, uh, you know, I didn't need CSIS uh, or the RCMP to uh, explain to me these, uh, how these people who were caucus colleagues uh, that were clearly working in the interests of other nations and uh, filling their pockets in the meantime. But let's, let's leave that for another, uh, yeah. another day. I want to thank you for, for joining with me today. Uh, and uh, really looking forward to uh, meeting you once again in person and on stage in uh, Burlington, November 9th. If you're watching, yeah, make sure you yeah, get your tickets at the People's Party of Canada Save Our Nation event. And uh, Max and I and many others will be looking forward to having a great, uh, enjoyable evening in Burlington. Thank you once again, Max. Thank you, Randy. I really appreciate to have that opportunity to speak with you and uh, see you in person in Burlington, Saturday, September 9th.